Hey, welcome back. Um, right now, since we've done the setup, if you've been following along, we have made our main class and we've created our display class and barely set them up. So now let's actually start setting this guy up because all we have is a class and we don't even have a method yet. So, um, like we normally do, we are going to have a constructor and we can make that right now. So we do that by typing public display. There you go. So now whenever this public class display gets called from our main method, it will go here. We're also going to create another method called public void init. And this is where we'll be putting all of the um, buttons and everything like that. So in display, we will simply call init. So you may be wondering why I went through the trouble of just making two uh, methods, one that just calls the other. Well, that's because sometimes it's hard to um, work with the um, display constructor or constructors in general. So I think it's easier just to call the method where we're doing the setup and it's more organized. So once we have that, we need to set up some uh, buttons, just like we always do. So we're going to have um, a big text pane, a button, a combo box, a label, a slider, and another combo box. That's all we're going to have in this entire window. Um, so let's get started by simply declaring those. So first we're going to start with the J text pane. So we'll do private j text pane and we'll name this text area now i know i haven't taught you about the j text pane but it's pretty much like a giant box where you can type whatever you want in and then you can manipulate that text so if you think of here this this window i'm typing in this is a j text pane right here so that's pretty much what it is it's just a place to type stuff in this is where we're going to be typing everything then we're going to make a private J button and we'll name this button save button and then we'll make a private J combo box and we'll name this color combo now I I don't I don't think I've taught you about the J combo box yet so what the J combo box is is it's like a pull down box where you can click it and a ton of options will roll down and you can select one of those object, one of those um, buttons, and then work with it. So that's what a combo box is. Um, so that's this is our color combo box where we're going to be selecting our colors. So let's do private J combo box again, combo box, and we'll name this font combo. So this is where you'll be selecting all of your fonts, and then we'll do private j label processor label and then so what this literally means is it's just a label where I say um, walks um, word processor or Daniel's word processor or Steven's word processor so whoever you want to put in there so it, this won't be used very much but it's going to be there so and by the way, if you have no idea what I just said, you will understand soon. So let's just continue. And then we're going to create a slider. So a private J slider, not a K slider, and we'll name this font size. And you can guess that this is going to be the slider for setting the font. So let's import our text pane. Let's import our button. Let's import our combo box. Let's import our label and let's import our slider. So if you don't know what I did, I honestly just hovered over it and clicked the import shortcut. So we're also going to be creating a few different things right now. First, we're going to create our method objects. So I'm going to make a comment that says create method objects, and you'll recognize these once I start typing. Um, actually, yeah, no, I'll, I'll keep going. So um, what a method object is, is it allows us to access other classes. So 
you know what, I'm actually not going to make them right now. So the reason I'm not making these method objects right now is because since we don't have our classes defined yet, they'll just return errors, and there's no reason to work with errors right now because that's just silly. So instead of creating those, let's create some arrays. So the reason we're creating arrays is because we want to fill these combo boxes with something. Because the way a combo box works is it goes into an array, and it looks for all the data in, in the array, and then it puts it in the combo box. So that's why we're going to be creating a few. So let's type string, brackets, color items. Let's make some space. And we'll set it equal to red, blue, green, purple, orange, not organ, okay, orange, and black. Okay, and then we can close that and do that. So what I've done is I've created an array of color items, and inside the array we have red, blue, green, purple, orange, black. And that's all it is. And then I'm going to create another array, so by typing string brackets, I'm going to type font uh, items. And we'll set this equal to um, mono spaced serif sans serif. So there's not as many fonts as there are colors, but it's enough for what we have. So what this means is, say I've completely hooked up all my combo boxes, and I click on my color combo box, click a little menu will drop down and it will say red, blue, green, purple, orange, black. That's all it will do. And you can select one of them and then work with it. So that's honestly all it is. And we are getting to the seven minute mark. So I think we've done not that much work right now, but this is only the beginning. We'll get into the really fun stuff soon. So get pumped for that. I'll see you in the next